Vice President Mike Pence, what a great honor to have you with us on the Savage Nation. Uh, Michael, it is great to be on Savage Nation with you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Well, I was just telling the audience that I'm the only person in the media, and it's true, that has an actual Ph.D. from a great university in a science. And all the evidence indicates to me that this whole global warming business is hyperbole. But, but putting that aside, Vice President, leaving the Paris Accords was good for the country as a whole. Can you please tell us why? <laughs> I, I, well, uh, number one, just uh, thank you for your strong support. Look, what, what the world saw yesterday, uh, frankly, what, what the world saw uh, last week when the president was traveling uh, from the Middle East to Europe is an American president putting America first. Uh, you know, the, uh, and that's, and, and it's what's, what's amazing to me is that the loser, Hillary Clinton, is calling that hatred. In other words, she's saying anyone who supports America and puts America first is a hater. This is how upside down the world is, Vice President Pence. You know, I, I just I just left the president. He he signed a couple of very important bills for law enforcement, uh, to, wrapping up a, a really productive week. But I, I honestly think that that's that's what people saw yesterday. And and the president took his time. He listened respectfully to leaders uh, across the world um, about about the Paris Accord. Uh, he came back. Uh, and he made a decision, and his decision was that, that the Paris Accord entered into by the Obama administration would undermine the American economy, our competitiveness and jobs. It was, it was negotiated badly. It literally puts America, would put America on the hook for extraordinary burdens that would cost jobs in this country, six and a half million jobs in the next 25 years, according to an independent estimate, while at the same time allowing countries like China and India to have a pass for decades or maybe always. It's, it, it's extraordinary uh, to think what, what, a, uh, what, a, what a lopsided deal this was. And, and the president put American interests, American workers, uh, America's economic future, and our energy future first when he made a decision to withdraw from the Paris Accord. And I, I couldn't have been more proud to be standing there with him when he did it. You know, I have a list in front of me of the billions and billions of dollars that were thrown into fighting so-called global warming, and I can only mention one of them, Solyndra. $535 million for this company that went bankrupt. The, the taxpayers never recovered this money. There are hundreds of these companies. There was a fortune being made on the global warming scam, which is not to say that you and I and the president are not working for a cleaner planet. I mean, that's not the point. Of course we are, but that doesn't mean we have to throw our economy away, does it? Well, that, that's the whole issue, and I, I said this morning in a, in in, an, in another interview that that you know you you have uh, elites in New York and in Washington and and Los Angeles and and the salons of Europe who sit back and make these decisions, put burdens on the American economy. But I I come from a heartland state, Indiana, in the Midwest. I've I've seen factories close. I've I've seen the the rising cost of energy that's putting a burden on on hardworking American families and on businesses that are struggling to make ends meet, and the costs are very real. And and what President Trump did yesterday was say we're we're going to put the interest of the American people first. But you know he left the door open to say look if you know we're willing to come back, we're willing to to negotiate either a new deal, a new arrangement, or possibly come back in. But we're only going to do that. If it's an agreement that is that that treats the American people and the American economy fairly and clearly, I, I understand. In fact, look, Vice President Pence, Trump's style is that of renegotiating deals that were poorly negotiated. Yeah. And I said, I said before he came out on the lawn yesterday that he's probably going to come out and say well, we are withdrawing, but he's going to renegotiate it. I think that that makes good sense. But having said that, this agreement doesn't kick in until when? Isn't it 2020? Well, right, it doesn't kick in for a number of years. And, and frankly, when you're talking about the inequities here, I mean, China actually, under the Paris Accord, will actually increase emissions until 2030. So <laughs> that's in the... Well, no wonder they were for the deal. No wonder they're boohooing that America pulled out. No wonder. For the deal. That they're going to... And, and in the United States, by contrast, and this is something... That you know, I I think it, it bears repetition. I mean, from because we heard the same hue and cry 
when when uh, the Bush administration rejected the Kyoto Protocol. Remember this? You're, you're an expert in this area, but you're, so your listeners... I do remember. I have a whole story on the Kyoto Protocols. I do, yes. It is the same hue and cry. Okay, so from then from 2000 to 2014, um, we, actually, we actually reduced CO2 emissions... Uh, by I think eighteen percent during those fourteen years through American innovation, through American new technology, through an all of the above energy strategy that that uh, diversified our energy sector, not because of some international convention that invariably in my lifetime, when you get in these international deals, the United States of America ends up carrying the heaviest burden and paying the bill. And uh, that's, you know, the president looked at this Paris Accord, and despite, you know, despite the international pressure, he stepped up, he put America first. Uh, and that, it just, as I said, uh, you know, I, I've, been, I've been honored to serve as vice president to President Donald Trump, but I, I couldn't have been more proud to be in the Rose Garden. You know, I, vice president, I know you're going to be hammered for this, as you are by all of the Hollywood actors who fly to their conferences and their uh, G5s and G6s, you know, in other words, in order to do good for mankind, they have to do very well indeed. And very well indeed they do in their G650s that cost $80 million. Uh, you know, the bonos and others. But I have the science in my hand. I would like to offer something to you that's really easy. I would love to send you Chapter 9 of Government Zero, a book I wrote a few years ago, on this subject. It's in layman's language, but it could be used by the White House to support your position with the actual science itself translated for the for the average person and for the media and i think that if you if anyone could spend some time just with this chapter i can help the administration get their message across that a the world is not coming to an end and b yes america is complying with great environmental laws in fact we're probably the cleanest industrial nation on the planet if i'm not mistaken isn't that true I, I believe that would be reflexively true. <laughs> so, I mean, this is this is the this is the whole truth of the matter. We're we're perhaps the most clean nation at this on this size nation uh, on planet on the planet. China is the number one polluter. But um, anyway, can I send this to the White House? I think we have your press secretary's name, and we'll offer it to him. But Michael, I, I'd be very pleased to have it. But I would tell you that there's also a truism that your listeners understand better than most, and that is that that freedom and prosperity are in the interests of the environment. It, it you know it you know in nations with command and control economy with government control of socialism. This is an unbroken truism as you look around the world, and and, and America's progress on on clean uh, water, land, air speaks for itself but it's it is a result of our economic freedom and and the president president's decision to withdraw from the paris climate accord was all about it was it was about putting the interests of america first putting the interests of our economy first it was also i'm proud to say it was also about reasserting american sovereignty and the yes. ability of the united states of america to continue to chart our own course with our own policies in ways that will ensure that our country will continue to grow and create opportunities uh, for, for working families across this nation. I think that says it all, and I don't want to drag this out, and I know you have many shows to do today. And I'm very honored by your second appearance in the year 2017 on The Savage Nation. Uh, it's great to hear from you again, and I hope to meet you the next time I'm in Washington, which may be in the near future. And again, I will send you a copy of this book I'm mentioning which has a great chapter on the real science and how to translate it for the average person. Michael, we'll look forward to it, and I'll look forward to seeing you. Just thanks for all you and Savage Nation have done to, to elect a president who I know in my heart of hearts will make America great again. <laughs> thanks, Vice President Pence. Thanks for being with us. Well, 